So hello everybody, this is the MP controller from the company MP MIDI. So first things first, what is that actually? So it's a combination of a touchscreen, so it's a normal monitor with touchscreen capabilities which you can connect to any of your computers and you have also 32 knobs around this panel, so eight on each side and this is something unique and yeah you can only order it from their website it's not cheap it's 780 euros but if you think about it if you would buy a touchscreen monitor of that size you pay around 150 200 euros and to get a controller with 30 knobs it's pretty hard to find you could get single ones with 8 or 16 and then you're already in the range of four or five hundred euro or you get something boutique which might be then even in the same price category or even more expensive if you have so many knobs but the main question is does this combination make really sense and another command, it's pretty hard to film this thing because it acts like a mirror if you shine any kind of light on it, uh, which you did not notice when you actually use it, but it's really horrible to film. And also you see all the fingerprints all over the device, which you also do not see on the real device when you use it here, but you see it on the film. And yeah, it looks much better in reality than on the video. I created here a little setup with three three windows with Bitwig, so also that as information. And on the third monitor, which is here now, the MP controller, I put the mixer so you can already use it here as a touch device. And you can, for example, change here panorama or volume settings, also edit your plugins, press play and stop and such things. And this is working nicely if you would only want to use it for that. Then I had also the idea you could maybe without any additional software directly also use the knobs. There's a bit of strange limitation I noticed is that because they're only absolute knobs, which is strange because they're actually endless. So relative knobs, but they send absolute. Nevertheless, you can use that. So they're uh, sending out normal MIDI data. So this might also be an option if you want to go without additional softwares, or maybe it won't work in the future for whatever reason, you could still use it as a normal MIDI device. Other things also to be aware of is you need third or second, depending on how many monitors you already have. So I have already two. So I needed a third video card output to feed into this monitor. Luckily, my video graphics card has three outputs, so I can connect this as well. And you need two USB sockets because one is for power and one is for the MIDI device connection, which will give you one MIDI input and output. Also worth mentioning, it's very solid and massive device. It's quite large and big. As you see, you need quite some space on your desk as well, but it's very, very well built and you don't have to worry that anything breaks with that device. Also something to note, this is a model 2A. There have been three models before, 1A, 1A+, and they are pretty similar. The details are minor, the screen is a bit different, and interior of the device is a bit different, but it has the same functionality. So if you also can get one secondhand, it will give you the same features as I will show you now. So what can it do for you? It can do different things. So one thing is you have a wrapper plugin, which allows you to control VST devices and currently only VST devices, VST2 or VST3. And you have a generic application which allows you to control anything that is MIDI. And there are some specific implementation scripts for Cubase, for Bitwig, for Ableton, and for DaVinci Resolve, which is a video editor you might have heard about. But they are on very different levels. So for DaVinci Resolve, only the color page can be controlled. With Bitwig Studio, you can only control the native devices. Same for Ableton. And with Cubase, you have the most control currently. You can control some mixer aspects as well as a quick controls, and you have a grid which allows you to put different knobs and execute different functions. So enough talking, let's dive in. Let's first have a look at the wrapper plugin. 
So let's move that window to here because I'm recording only one screen here. And if you see that, I loaded that already up. And if you open it, it will show you here what I have loaded and it will automatically open here that edit screen. You can close it down if you press that button here and you can show it up again. And I loaded here the SCV from Arturia, uh, which is not yet a map, but I did a pre-mapping for that, which you can load up here. So I start here this new control, so that one. And you see here now some different mappings, the cutoff, resonance, and so on. Let's give that a go here. Yeah, so this works totally nicely. And let me show you how that works if you don't have a mapping or want to change this. This is actually pretty easy and straightforward. So let's load something else. Let's say, for example, we have here the Separolet of Yuhi, which is a totally free plugin. And here you see already one thing you need to note. It opens always the windows in the middle and it might get a bit too big. So then luckily or hopefully your device can be scale so you can make it a bit smaller to allow the mapping i think also 90 percent here works fine and then you can say you want to link any of the knobs let's say we want to map the lfo here to that button and then we have mapped here the lfo and then you would need to do the same for the other ones but there is a faster way if you want to say you want to map more you can say a link multiple and then you can start pressing on the knobs or buttons or whatever there is and then it will automatically fill here these parameters and if you are done with it, so if you turn that off, it will say, where do you want to put it? So there is a numbering, one, two, three, and around this to 32. So let's put it here on one. Okay, we're fine with that. And then you have directly here this mapping and can tweak that to your hearts alike. And that's pretty straightforward. And you will also see here the names of these parameters. So that's basically what you can do with this wrapper plugin. I'm not a fan of wrapper plugins at all, but nevertheless, this works really nicely. And if you are looking for something for that, I think this is a really neat solution. And there are also different versions from that. This is for instruments. So if you want to use effects as a different one, so I guess the difference is that the one takes audio input and the other one MIDI input. So let's have a look at the specific specific support here for Bitwig, you can control all the Bitwig devices. For that, you need to install a script, which I have here. It's simply that MP controller. You can download that from the website. But the installation is also a bit tricky because you need to install a driver for virtual MIDI input output. And this has to be exactly this name. And the best thing for configuration is to take a look at their knowledge base and there you find all the answers how to set that up also here the documentation for cubase and so on because they are also sending a pdf with some getting started instructions and to be honest they confused me more than having a look here in this knowledge base which is really helpful and here you also find how to set up the touch display which is also a bit tricky on windows on mac and but this is really detailed and nice and yeah you can make your way through that for the configuration. So, but back to Bigwig. So we have that running via this MIDI routing and it also opens up the user interface automatically. So if I click now to delay, nothing is happening. I need to deactivate that. So that's also something um, which could maybe improved. I can run these in parallel, but I also need to show that again here from the little app, which you don't see. It's here in the taskbar, this little app to start that up. And then you see the EQ and here the delay. So if you select these devices, you will automatically get the control to these. So if you're using a lot of Bitwig native devices, this is really powerful too, because you will directly get here 
here the different parameters for editing and yeah they really did a big job because it's quite a lot of parameters they have here maybe let's try to replace that here with polysynth so also the polysynth editing here is directly here you could change to real do really weird stuff with that Idea what I'm doing as usual. <laughs> oh, now we're talking. So, but I guess you get the idea. This is really nice to have. As I said, the same is available in Ableton, but there is currently no support for anything mixer related. But as I said, you could switch to the Bitwig screen and there you can also use the fader or the touch for mixing, which is also nice. Also something to be aware of, you can also zoom in here only on that screen. So Bitwig remembers that for the different screens, you can also say which of the three screens you want to see on that area. So you could also have here the, the arranger view on that view. And here you can say you want to increase it. So if you have some difficulties to finding the touch, you could increase it to that size, which is then really easy to do. And also you could start seeing it pretty, pretty easily. But besides the native devices, you could also use it as a totally stupid and dumb MIDI controller with any other application. You could, for example, use generic Flexi in Bitwig Studio, which is also uh, from for my driven by Moss bundle of extensions and map anything to anything. And how do you configure that here in this MP app? You simply say you want to have something new and I feel a little test thing, which is empty. You can now configure all the different buttons, which we have a lot of them. So you can go to several pages, 32 pages you have for buttons. And you have also different views, which you can also step here to edit them. I was really looking for that. It's a little bit hard to find. So you need to right click with the mouse on the button to edit it. And then you can change then the different things. You can also add icons. For example, you can say select image and then you need to select image here again. And for example, you can take the images which are part of the Cubase script. So it comes with some images. For example, we could pick here, what do you want? A play button and you can say you want to change a color. We want to have that. If it's unpressed, it should be green. It should go white if it's pressed and yeah, like this, close it. And then you have here this button and you can do the same here for the knobs. You can also change here the colors of the knobs, send it to any host or any application which speaks MIDI. What you won't get from that is that you can only use fixed names. So you can name that button, but it will always have this name. It will not get updated like we have seen before in the Bitwig plugins, for example. So as I said, host support is on different levels. So no mixer currently available here. And the Cubase one is also might worth discussing, but they tease something on their YouTube channel. This new view, which if you look at the background is currently for Cubase, but I guess there is hope that they will add that to Bitwig and Ableton as well. And this looks much more straightforward because you have on the top, you have your panorama, you have your volume at the bottom. And this makes totally much more sense than what we can have now. And together with the wrapper plugin for VSTs and the support in Bitwig for the native devices, this would be really round and powerful package and i'm a bit split with that because yeah it's a bit chunky but nevertheless it's really powerful and you need to really spend some time to make this use to configure it, the different parameters but if you did so i think yeah you can do a lot with that device really and yeah i'm curious what do you think do you want to have one do you like it do you not like it what is your opinion on that device please write me down in a comment and until next time make some funky music